Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome in to the Graham Lincoln MacLean podcast. If you haven't noticed, we're in different places, of course. I am in a hotel room in Charlotte getting ready for ACC Media Days, which will have already happened when you listen to this episode. But I hope you watched. Mac, where are you? <laughs> Where's Waltho? It's another new place. Um, I'm actually in Clemson, South Carolina. As crazy as that Ooh. sounds, we have photo shoot for little baby Amelia tomorrow. So I'm oh. super excited about that. So we, we had to make a trip up here. We're at the at the in-laws house and uh, yeah, a third different room for the third straight <laughs> episode. So it's good. It's good to keep the consistency rolling. <laughs> That's what we do. And uh, yeah, Mac, you are completely a dad if you're doing baby photos already. And right. Mac, you know, you're probably going to be the star of these photos. So make sure that you... <laughs> Look good. Make sure your outfit's ready. It's all about you in this photo shoot, okay? Right. So make I'm sure gonna make you're sure ready. my hair is perfect and right. That's, <laughs> I will do all that. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, we had such a good guest today. I am excited for you guys to hear this interview, and we've been wanting to have him on really since the beginning. But we were waiting for the right time, waiting for the right week. <laughs> and this week we have Duke UNC. We thought maybe we'd have two five and one teams. Duke did lose last week, but Duke's still four and two, and this game is at Duke. So very capable of knocking off the heels. The heels are coming off a big win over Miami. Not ranked, but five and one. I think if they win this game, they probably will be ranked. And I had to address the elephant in the room at the beginning of this interview and just make sure Drake knew that Mac has a major bro football crush <laughs> on him, on his abilities, on the way he plays quarterback. I've honestly never heard Mac talk about a player like he talks about Drake May. So, Mac, I mean, did you have butterflies when we started talking to him? Well, I wanted to ask you, is there more of a glow when I'm talking about my <laughs> new daughter or when I'm talking about Drake mm. May? I mean, which one? I think it's Which equal. one is it? It's pretty similar. <laughs> don't let her hear that and don't let Kaki hear that. But <laughs> it, it's true. This this young man is absolutely balling. We had to get him on the podcast. And, you know, what a better week to do it than right here, going against a rivalry that he was born into. He didn't have a choice, mm -hmm. you know, with his dad playing back in the day and then, of course, his brother Luke. Uh, so really excited for this episode. Drake has been lighting up college football right now. He, he's top in every statistical category you can think of with – yards and touchdowns, percentage completion, all this stuff. It's been really impressive to watch him, KG. Uh, but without further ado, let's get to this interview with Drizzy. Drake, welcome to the podcast, my man. Really appreciate you joining us today. This is a big deal because, KG, it's an amazing accomplishment. This is our first brother that we've had on the podcast so drake we had your older brother a basketball player uh, from from unc on and now we've got you we've got luke now we've got drake so thanks for joining us big man yeah no problem thanks for having me on i'm um, glad to be on here and i'm hopefully i do uh you know luke's kind of hard to stand and live up to you know he's great at <laughs> talking and be personable so hopefully i do all right. So well, he he was also overseas, and there was a yes. weird time jump, and so we're at least on the same time zone right now. So we're already doing better. Listen, mm -hmm. I, I, we're going to be kind of all over the place. I want to spend a little time on last week. I want to spend a little time on this week, this coming Saturday. But to start, I want to kind of take a ten thousand foot view and really just look at the start of this season, man, because you have been lighting it up statistically from a leadership standpoint. But most importantly, you guys are winning. It's got to be really cool so far. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, you know, winning is always fun. Uh, I think one of the big things this year, which is on the road, I think we're 3-0 on the road. Mm -hmm. That helps, you know, any team. And, um, you know, other than that Notre Dame one, you know, obviously we've had that one back. Um, you know, they're a good football team. They had a big win this past week against BYU. So they're a good football team. And we're just, uh, you know, ready to get after rivalry week. Um, even though it's, uh, you know, Duke, uh, it's, you know, shoot, any college right down the road, uh, just like State, you know, but kind of both rivalry games. So uh, ready to get after them, and they've proven they can they can win some games, and they're doing um, pretty good this year. So we've got, got to come come after them. But uh, overall, you know, it's been fun. You know, football, it's playing here in North Carolina when we've got things going, it's fun. we got a, you know, good squad. Um, we're kind of gelling a little more, and as season go on, the fiber is getting better. So uh, just ready to keep tackling opponents and uh, keep getting after it. Drake, we're going to get to the Duke game. Don't worry about that. But I, I have to address this, okay, because you're a very busy guy. You probably don't listen to the podcast. You may, you may see Mac on TV every once in a while. I just have to put out the elephant in the room that Mac has a massive bro crush on you. Like, he he constantly talks about how much he loves watching <laughs> you play football, how you're going to be a top five pick. 
how you're the best quarterback in the ACC. Like, I just want to get that out in the open, okay? Just so you're aware of that, Drake. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Hey, <laughs> hey, it, 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 thanks a lot. It means a lot. Uh, you got it, brother. You got it. <laughs> you're a fan of me. I'm a fan of his. So, hey, Come on. Hey, there we go. I also love making people uncomfortable, so that's why I did that. Okay, so let's talk about your – yeah, there you go. Let's talk about uh, some of the guys you've been playing with here, Drake, your wide receivers. You have seven pass catchers on this team that either have double-digit receptions or 100-plus yards. How fun has it been for you where you feel like you can just go to any weapon who's open? Is that kind of the mindset you have right now? Oh, yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's the mindset I've been playing with, you know, kind of my, my whole football career. That's the great thing about this offense. Um, defense tries to take away guys. We have other guys are going to hurt them. And uh, they just throw in the open guy because, you know, once each guy has the ball in their hands, uh, as I've seen, they can make plays. And uh, that's hard for defense to game plan. You know, they try to key in on Josh or – Maybe the tight ends, they'd be getting more balls. We just, you know, keep hammering them with uh, kind of the different guys. Just our running back room, they made some big catches, Caleb and them, uh, this past week. And uh, just, you know, obviously the mentality just been throw the open guy, give, give it to the defense gives us. And uh, I think it's been paying off and just got to, you know, stay on that track because I think sometimes we lock in on receivers and uh, I kind of get in trouble. And um, hmm. that's what work, what's working for us. And we're just you know, glad, you know, the defense, uh, defense have been having trouble. You know, kind of stopping, like you said, seven, eight different pass catchers each week. That's tough for defense. You mentioned uh, your your guy, Josh, who was out for the first, for missed a couple games there at the beginning. How was that for you to adjust? Because, look, Josh Downs one of the best players in the country. I mean, in camp, I'm sure you weren't locked in on one guy, but you were using Josh Downs. So what was that adjustment like for you, and do you feel like you guys are better off for it? Oh, yeah. You know, Josh, shoot, his year last year and what he does with football in his hands, it's, it's spectacular. Um, so just keep trying to – I think we can still do a better job getting the ball more. Um, as you all see, when he has the ball in his hands, he's a special player, um, one of the you know, best shooters in the country. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just find some game plan stuff to try to get him to rock, um, just like anybody else. But uh, at the same time, you know, we're just – they'll try to key on him with his year last year and stuff. So, uh, you know, whatever defense gives us. And uh, But at the same time, you know, Josh, golly, you know, he's, he's a player. Um, you know, <laughs> Any, any quarterback loves a receiver like him. So uh, he's, you know, he's fun to play with, and he's an awesome guy. Um, so just that's the thing about the receiver room and the tight ends. You know, nobody cares, you know, um, no egos about who's getting the ball. We're all just, you know, looking here to win. I think that's, that's that winning mentality that uh, any team needs. Well, let's talk a little bit about this run game, Drake, because I, I saw this stat today that you lead the country with four games with 200 yards passing and 50-plus rushing. I, I just want to know in your mind – when it's not a designed run and, and maybe you're extending the pocket or, or you're about to take off and run, what, what's going through your mind where you make that decision where you, you're doing one of those two things? Yeah, I think, you know, any any time, you know, we got to drop back pass, uh, I just kind of have that clock in my mind, kind of that timer uh, that kind of goes off. Well, shoot, you know, I feel like kind of time's kind of rubbing up, got to get out of the pocket, try to make a play. Um, I'm always thinking kind of go downfield first um, and try to, you know, keep my eyes up and try to hit a receiver. But at the same time, you know, I feel like I'm an athletic guy. Um, 6'5", I can go make some make some, make some, um, some work on the ground. So uh, I just try to do what I can. I got to do a better job of getting down a little bit. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, big downs, I got to uh, get the first down or, or possibly near the goal line and try to score. So uh, just try to hurt people with my feet because I think that's also something for, for defense to touch the game plan. Shoot the guy right covered, covered um, big third down. Shoot, let me go make a make – a, make a play with my feet, and I think that, that's the defense coordinator's worst nightmare, I think, so. No doubt. Okay, well, speaking of the run game, I mean, a guy that's been really impressive, freshman Omarion Hampton, and I remember Matt came back from North Carolina practice uh, in August, and he said, watch <laughs> out for this guy. He was super excited to see this guy. Yeah. We know what he's done so far. What, what stood out to you when you first saw him? Either I, I'm not sure when he enrolled, either it was early on or fall camp, but did you think, okay, he's going to make an immediate impact? Oh, yeah. Um, I think we, we call him Big O. No, but Big O, he, uh, he, rolled, in, he rolled in the summer, so we didn't really get a chance to see him in the spring. Uh, but I think that first scrimmage, uh, kind of live scrimmage where we actually start tackling, because um, really it's sometimes hard for running backs to kind of see how they are, you know, carrying the football in practice because usually just thud or tag off. Um, but that first scrimmage, um, Omari almost, you know, breaking tackles, uh, running people over, scoring. I think he had a couple touchdowns, too, that day. So uh, I think kind of after that day, we knew he was going to be something special. And, uh, you know, he's still got some things that he's working on, that he'll tell you, um, just about, you know, sometimes with the, you know, the plays and uh, some of his assignments. But, you know, when he gets that rock in his hands, he's tough to bring down. And, um, you know, he's, he's fun to watch. It's, it's fun to the guy off, uh, you know, and 
you know, shoot, we're not throwing it, we're running it, and we're giving it to Mario. So <laughs> it's, it's a good feeling, especially with the goal line, because like that one on Saturday, she gets hit about three yard line, bounces off a couple of dudes, and ends up getting the end zone. So it's it's, it's fun and it makes my job easier. That's right. He, he's just a sledgehammer. He just looks different. And, you know, we were at your practice right before that scrimmage that you're talking about. And, and what was so funny is I think it was one of the first couple of days that you guys were in, you know, full gear. And, you know, I see 28 walking out there and he was with, you know, a couple of the tight ends. So I'm like, man, that's a big dude. Is that is that some new tight end? And then Coach <laughs> Brown goes, no, that's a true freshman running back. And I said, okay, uh, that guy's going to be a problem. And surely he yeah. has been. Uh, just so good to see. And number one, you know, the coach is trusting him to, you know, go do his thing because it's been, it's been wonderful for you guys. And like you said, super helpful for you. Let's transition a bit here and just look at this win on the road, man. You, you brought it up, going and being road dogs this year, going and get it done. Really just a complete team effort to beat Miami at Miami. I know that had to feel really good. Oh, it felt awesome. Uh, I think, you know, one of the big storylines kind of was, you know, doing it for Corey Gaynor, who, you know, he spent some time there as a team captain there. He said three years. So uh, I think that was a big game for him. And uh, the big thing about Corey, he didn't make it about himself. I think he's, um, he, you know, before kind of the game, he's talking about, you know, it's about us. You know, it's, about, it's not about me. And uh, I ended up playing out because, you know, defense, um, defense complimented us in the second half and we didn't have some things going as, as well as we'd like. But also, uh, it's like the first half we got after him. And, uh, you know, I think that just shows ultimate team game uh, football is. And, you know, defense has some big stops. How about them this this, this past week? So, uh, you know, anytime, you know, get a big win on the road. Um, we are kind of, you know, anticipating not as big as crowd, but, you know, Miami brought it. They had some, mm. some crowd in there and some crowd noise that gave some problems. So, uh, you know, anytime you get a big win in an NFL stadium like that, it's, uh, you know, can't complain about that. You mentioned your defense, Drake. Now, this defense has taken some flack throughout the year. They've had some games where they've given up a lot of points, but they hold Miami to 24 points. They have the big interception at the end. I know TVD threw for a bunch of yards, but it feels like they're developing a little bit of a, a bend, don't break mentality. What improvement and what, what kind of improvement have you seen from this defense from camp to now? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is uh, you know, they got good players. They got, we got great guys. Um, and the big thing for me is uh, kind of seeing in practice, I go against them every day is, you know, bringing a new defensive coordinator, uh, and now everything's going to click right away. And I think they're starting mm -hmm. to gel more, um, less assign, like kind of coverage is being blown in practice. And, you know, you know, seven on seven, the tighter windows, they got to make some throws. Uh, so it's just making all this better. And team periods, you know, they're physical, getting physical up front. And uh, just kind of any time, you know, you're going through a new scheme, uh, just kind of practice, you know, practice makes makes everybody better. So uh, time goes on, I feel like they're getting better. And, uh, you know, we got to do our part to make their job a little easier. Uh, I think we had some long drives that helped them out a little bit. We got to put some more points on the board. Um, you know, but it's good having Coach Chizik. You know, Coach Chizik, he's a, he's a mastermind. I think uh, we got the, we got the players on the defensive side. So uh, we're getting things rolling. It's exciting to watch. I love it, man. Just the great answers throughout this entire mm -hmm. thing already. And, and just the leadership, wise beyond your years, my man. And, and you're doing a great job leading this team. That's evident right here in this conversation. I've got one more thing on Miami before we move on to the Blue Devils. And, and – I need you to walk me through this because the touchdown pass to Josh Downs was one of the best, dumbest decisions I've ever seen in my life. Because when you <laughs> threw that thing, I'm screaming, no, no. And then I'm like, yes, yes, yes. So just tell me what you saw, what you were thinking. And then I need to know what Coach Longo said to you when you got onto the sidelines. <laughs> I know. Um, shoot, you know, Coach Longo, one thing about Coach Longo is, dude, we score, he's going to be happy. Um, there you go. <laughs> so I didn't get off on assignment. Um no, but we had a little a uh, little motion, um, kind of tight end, kind of fake jet sweep type, type motion. And uh, we had a guard pull in protection, um, which kind of sometimes creates creates problems with backside pressure. And uh, Caleb ended up picking it up and, uh, you know, had a guy tangled on my feet. Um, but Josh was wide open, and uh, I could have done a better job maybe in the pocket. I mean, he would have been wide open for a touchdown. But, shoot, I heaved it up to him and uh, got enough power on it. Good thing, uh, you know, thank the Lord, and you got enough power on it. <laughs> linebackers right there um no but shoot like i said josh with the ball in his hands he bounces off a tackler and yeah. uh diving in the end zone so uh you know it's not exactly how we drew it up but uh ended up going to the guy um that shoot will make plays um uh, when you get in the rock so uh not an ideal scenario obviously um but it worked shoot, out it worked out yeah six points on the board right that's right <laughs> 
All right, let's let's look at Duke here. That's the big game that we're previewing with this episode <laughs> and is one of the big games in the ACC this weekend along with some others. And, you know, this is one of the biggest rivalries in sports, whether we're talking hoops, whether we're talking basketball. And Duke has really improved from last year with new head coach Mike Elko. This is a divisional game for you guys. You guys are pretty much in the driver's seat right now for the Coastal. Lots of football left to play. Um, growing up in a Tar Heel family, though, what does it mean to beat Duke? And what does this rivalry mean to you to play in it? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, growing up, uh, I think one of the you know, first kind of big student UNC games I remember was being in middle school. I was a ball boy um, <laughs> from North Carolina on Duke basketball game uh, here in the Dean Dome. Wow. Um, I think it was when Jaleel Okafor and them were playing and Justice Winslow. And Man. Uh, just seeing that, uh, you know, being, seeing that kind of, I mean, shoot, before those years, shoot, Carolina versus Duke has always been, you know, a big, big night in our house, big day. So, uh, you know, getting an opportunity to actually be a part of it is, I think, is pretty cool. And uh, seeing Luke Games, obviously, his big ones against Duke. Uh, I think he actually got his first start ever in Cameron um, back when he was playing uh, sophomore wow. year. So, uh, you know, Duke, you know, it's, it's, it's not a team that, you know, we're very fond, fond of over here um, in Carolina. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, credit to them, they've had some things going. And, um, you know, anytime we're going into a road atmosphere, uh, you're going to expect that kind of their best. And, obviously, you know, with the way we've been playing, we got some, you know, it's harder on our back, so we got to come ready, and uh, we're excited to go ahead over there. Um, and you know, it's right down the Tobacco Road, kind of, kind of rivalry. So we're, uh, we'll be ready, and we got to, you know, come ready. That's right. That's right. Well, KJ, K, KG mentioned they're most much improved. You mentioned, you know, these guys have gotten better. What have you just really seen from them? I know, I know it's early in the week, but what have you seen from them on film? What makes them a dangerous team defensively? Oh yeah, uh, I think Coach Elko, you know, come from Texas A&M, uh, that SEC kind of, uh, kind of that mind. He's, uh, you know, they're going to have him sound. They're going to be in the right spot, and uh, they got some good players. Um, they got some, you know, some transfers that come in, and also they have some some experienced guys that are um, kind of redshirt, kind of soft uh, seniors and juniors and stuff. So uh, they have experience, and uh, you know, I've seen a rivalry game. They're going to play hard, so we got to, um, you know, have a good week of practice and uh, just come. Just come prepared for whatever they're going to bring. Um, I think, and they oftentimes uh, kind of get, get get frowned upon um, just for the previous years, but they got it going, and uh, they've won some, some big games and kept it close with, I think, everybody in their their two losses. So yeah, it's going to be a big one, and it's a big one for you know us heading to the bye week. We're looking forward to it. There's no doubt. Okay, before we get you out of here, Drake, I got to ask about a guy who was a mentor to you in a lot of ways, and it's now in the NFL in Sam Howell. What what did you learn from him? just kind of being um, under his wing, if you will. And, and what do you think you take from what you learned from him to how you play quarterback? Yeah. Um, you know, Sam, I still, I still talk to him, you know, a couple times a week. Uh, we're always talking. Uh, he's one of my, one of my best friends. So, uh, you know, sitting kind of in his, in his pocket all last year, uh, just kind of, you know, getting to experience, you know, what's like being, you know, you know, college starting college quarterback. Uh, just, I think one of the, one of the big things is preparation. You know, he, he took every week, like, you know, no matter the opponent, um, like it's, you know, a big week, go 1-0. And uh, just sitting with him, you know, in the film room and uh, seeing him do do extra film study and uh, just kind of really key in on, on small things, and kind of the little things. Uh, that's that's kind of the big thing I've taken away. And just also, I think, you know, one thing that he always says, not take it for granted because it goes by fast. Um, so just enjoy mm -hmm. your time, enjoy each game. You only get 12 of them that are guaranteed. And uh, I think he... Uh, you know, he loved his time here, and uh, he, he kind of uh, always said it was flew by. So uh, just go take each game um, for what it's worth and just, just have fun because, you know, playing quarterback here at a university like this is pretty special. I don't think there's any doubt about it. It's awesome to have a, a mentor, a leader, and a friend, you know, like that to, to learn from who was so successful and then to follow in his shoes. All right, Drake, we're going to get you out of here, but I, I have to ask you a, a football-basketball question, just the nature of this rivalry and, and how important it is to, to your family and, and to other fans. You were a, a sharpshooter in high school. I, I was doing some research. I was looking up a bunch of different tape preparing for this. Yeah. Riley Leonard was an above-the-rim type of guy. He, he was a big <laughs> athlete on the court, pretty good player. Who wins one on one between the two of y'all? Uh, shoot, uh, I mean, I, I, I think uh, Riley. I think he's had a really good season in football, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's, he's a great player uh, in basketball. I've heard this and things like that, but I'm I'm always gonna take myself. Man. Oh, really, there we go. <laughs> you know, I think that's just you know the, the competitiveness of you know real shoot any any athlete. I'm always that's gonna take right. myself um, in my ability on the basketball court. So, uh, you know, credit to him. I think he's, I've heard he's a great player as well, but. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'll probably catch up the match of the game or something. There you the go. 
But, hey, listen, this this is, I think, all of our mantra on this podcast. When a dunk's worth three points, we'll start doing it, all right? We're going to stay in the corner and flick that thing. Right. Drake, this was so much fun, man. Appreciate your time. And, uh, yeah, man, excited for you guys this weekend. Thanks again to Drake May for joining us on the pod this week. We really appreciate talking with him. And, you know, he, Mac, his personality is so good. He just strikes me as a, aw shucks, I love playing football. I'm so excited I get to play for North Carolina. I love North Carolina. I love my teammates. And this is so great. I mean, what a refreshing attitude from a guy who is really good at what he does. Shoot, Kelly, when you talk to a guy like that that just has so many weapons, has a little twang in his voice, it's uh, it's impressive. And I'll tell you what, it, it was fun to kind of see the innocence behind it, a reminder just how young this young man is and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. going through his career at a, at a lightning speed right now. Uh, but, but it was really cool to see his leadership mentality, his ability to really think through a question and, you know, not make it about himself and make it about his teammates and, and to, yeah. you know, the way that he got other guys involved with some of his answers, I thought was just really cool. And I mentioned it, you know, a while back talking to him, but just really wise beyond his years and was very impressed even more so now with the off the field stuff and, and being able to sit down and, and talk with him has a big challenge this week. And, and he mentioned it there, the, the Elko factor, of this mm-hmm. game and, and just knowing that the defense is much improved and going to really try to get after, you know, North Carolina, but also have some, some unique coverages in the back end that, you know, Drake's saying, we're, we're going to be ready. We're going to watch the film. We're going to get after it and, and figure all that out. Before we dive a little more into Duke UNC and give you a quick preview, we will talk more about that game on Friday and completely break it down as we always do. <laughs> Mac, it concerned me and made me feel so old, which I think as we continue to talk to these student, to these student athletes, Mac, you and I realize how old we are. But when he said he yeah. was a ball boy for a Duke UNC game mm. in the Dean Dome, I'm thinking, oh wow, mm. he was there. You know, when Gerald Henderson and Tyler Hansborough had that spat, he was there for like a you know a Ty Lawson game or something. No, he was there when Jaleel Okafor and Justice Winslow and Grayson Allen were playing in 2015. Like, oh my God, he's so young. But I think that we're finally. You and I are finally realizing how old we are, which is nice. It's good. We we were seniors in college. <laughs> you you yes. might have already been graduated. Uh, so yes. I, it's when you look at it, it's just like, oh, my gosh, just really just hit us <laughs> right where it hurts there. I, I thought what was interesting, too, and you guys, I'm bringing this to light. That this was not in the interview because I kind of said this as, as he was walking off. He said, listen, I could play above the rim, too, when I played basketball. Mm. And so I thought that was fun. I, I'll have to do a little more research. The highlights that I saw – uh, he he was sharpshooting. He was all over the floor, but just an athletic guy. And uh, man, it, it, it's fun to see a family like that and, and how competitive it was growing up. I'm sure that he was probably oh, yeah. beat down all the time because he was the younger, smaller guy. And now he might be the best athlete out of all of them, which is, is crazy to think. Right. And may, uh, may go on to have the best pro career out of all of them. We'll, we'll see what Very happens likely. with that down the road. Yes, indeed. So speaking of this game, I'm looking at the way too early line here. We are, for Just for reference, we are recording this on Monday. North Carolina is a seven-point favorite. This is an 8 o'clock game <laughs> on ACC Network, so on ACC Primetime. And the seven-point favorite, it surprised me a little bit because this game's at Duke. I do think Duke's been getting better crowds. I think this will be a pretty good crowd for the Blue Devils. And like we said, Duke's 4-2. and two. The issue for Duke is that they're coming off a game against Georgia Tech where – they looked pretty lifeless offensively until the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And Jalen Calhoun went down with an upper body injury. He's their best receiver. We don't know if he's going to be back. It's Monday. We'll, we'll update you on Friday if we right. know more. But I think when you, when you take all that into, into account and how UNC's defense has been looking better, I can see why this line is, is around a touchdown. You know, I think what's going to be really interesting and, and specifically about, <laughs> you know, Duke is – they almost play like a different team when they're on the road. And so I know those guys are going to be jacked up to get back home, to get in their stadium with their fans. And I'm sure a lot of Carolina fans have gobbled up those tickets and and it might be a 50, 50 split knowing how crazy UNC fans are. Uh, But this is going to be an excellent game. And and just to see where both programs are and, and maybe to start the season, didn't think this game would be anywhere close to this magnitude and this importance. And, you know, my, my first impression of it is, KG, what can this Duke defense do to slow down, 
to limit, to frustrate North Carolina. And, and I think Miami gave you a little bit of a blueprint. You need big Dwayne Carter. You need big Shaka Hayward. You need that defensive line and defensive ends to get in his face. You need them to try and bring that young man down, try to speed up his process. And, and you know, I think that that was something that the Hurricanes were able to do and caused him a little bit of issues. Now, the one good thing is, is he has so many releases. He has so many checkdowns. He has so many, you know, security blankets. The, the whole receiving core is, is a, you know, blanket for him. And, and he can find those guys and find answers. So if, you, if you're going to blitz, if you're going to try to hurry him up, you better hit home because if not, he's going to kill you in the back end. And, and this thing could get away really quickly. And Mac, you're exactly right. I think that's a good point. Duke's home road splits are like night and day. I mean, their two losses have come on the road at <laughs> Kansas, who's pretty good, and then at Georgia Tech, who's playing incredibly inspired. But then when they've played at home, their lights out. They did win at Northwestern. We, we can't ignore that win. So I, I think the home field factor is definitely going to be something to look at here. When I look at UNC's offense, though, I just I think the bottom line is I wonder how Duke's going to be able to score with UNC. And we, Drake right. May told us, he said, we only put up 27 at Miami. We've got to put it more. We've got to help our defense more. Drake May has nearly thrown for Mm -hmm. 2,000 yards in freaking six games. He has 21 touchdown passes. He only has three (laughs) picks. He he saw some adversity against Miami. We talked about that. And he was able to bounce back. So, especially without Jalen Calhoun, that's my big concern for Duke. I understand what Duke's going to bring defensively, but I just don't don't Mm -hmm. see it right now how they're going to score with UNC. Right. Well, you know, what's interesting is when, when we were looking at that Kansas game and we were really just getting ready for that, those were two of the most efficient offenses in the country. Now Duke's played a little bit tougher competition. Some of that has, has fell to the wayside. But again, I, I don't think we can discredit that split and, and just how differently yeah. they do play at home. And so I, I think we're going to see more of that efficient, explosive team. They also were the most explosive offense in the ACC for a while there in, in regards to yards per play. So I think this is a rivalry game. I think they're at home. That's where I think this could get it out of hurry in a hand when you talk about points and points in bunches. So that bend don't break mentality certainly going to come into play for this UNC defense. I'm interested to see them. Can they build? Can they capitalize on momentum? And, and really, I, I know <laughs> Miami threw for a billion yards. I know that, but they only scored 24. They, they did not mm-hmm. get into the end zone. You, you let them get all the way down there. And then you flexed your muscles. So at the end of the day, this game is is we, we keep score. We don't keep yardage. And, and so if you can keep them out of there, if you can hold you know any offense to a field goal, then you're feeling really good with the offense that you have behind you. So I cannot wait for this game, KG. It, it's going to be so much fun. This rivalry is, is – these people hate each other. Listen, this is a grocery store game. This is bragging rights for 365. And uh, jacked up, it's on our network, prime time. We get to cover it from first kick to, to last and, and cannot wait to see it all. And hopefully no light delays this time for Mac and the crew. Let's let's make sure the lights you know, are working at, at Wallace Way. Duke Wade. energy. We're at Duke. I, I think there's some <laughs> synergy there that it'll be all right. <laughs> Look at you rhyming there, Mac. We only have four games this weekend. We will break all of them down and go really in depth on Friday as well with this Duke UNC game. Update you on the Jalen Calhoun news. We've got Clemson FSU, Miami, Virginia Tech, NC State, Syracuse, Duke UNC. I don't know if you could ask for four better games. So come back on Friday and we'll break it all down. That's right. Cannot wait. Loaded weekend. It's some some great, great quality games. Some games that can really, you know, decide part of, you know, who's in the driver's seat again and mm-hmm. uh, who, who's out of the car. So excited to see all that. Big shout out to Jeremy uh, Sharp there getting this done for us, getting this interview. And of course, Drake May for, for lending us some of his time. He was excellent, as I said earlier. Just cool to see that young man growing as as a leader and a great football player. But guys, that's it from us. Another great episode of Gramlick and Mac Lane. If you don't have SiriusXM, go and get it. You can have it in your car, on your phone, wherever you go. SiriusXM can follow you. But we also need you to go over to YouTube, go over to Apple Podcasts, rate review subscribe tell us about what we're doing things you like things you don't like always fun to hear from you guys but until next time we'll see y'all